This is the latest video in the Exposed series where I talk about doctors that may be not giving you the full story about themselves or perhaps misleading you by how they represent themselves. I'm here to tell you the full truth and I'm not telling you not to use somebody. I'm not trying to disparage anyone. I'm just trying to tell you the truth and what's out there in public information. And this one is about Dr. Simon Urian. Now, Dr. Urian became famous after getting some endorsements from Kim Kardashian online and social media, and that really blew up his name. Uh, he started getting more celebrity clients that were shown to be coming in and out of his clinic. And uh, he's known now throughout uh, the internet as the celebrity cosmetic dermatologist. The thing is, he is actually not trained in residency in dermatology. I looked into his background and he is uh, licensed in the state of California. And so I looked into the Medical Board of California and according to the Medical Board of California, he had training at the time that he applied for his license. The training that he represented was some training in internal medicine and some training in anesthesia. But anesthesiology and internal medicine are not related to dermatology nor plastic surgery. So he does practice what he calls cosmetic dermatology and he talks about his residency training on his website, but he's very careful how he words it. He says that he has residency, during his residency in UCLA, he became interested in things like dermatology and aesthetics, but it doesn't say that he trained in dermatology and aesthetics because he didn't, he can't claim that. But you might think because he calls himself a cosmetic dermatologist that he's trained in dermatology, but the fact is he's not. And there's a lot more to his story. I did a lot of research on Dr. Urian, and I've had many people contact me as I've done my research and collected a lot of information. One of the more shocking bits of information is that his license was revoked in 2009. There were charges placed against him in uh, 2005. And I've got to look at my notes because there's a lot of stuff and I can't keep it straight. There were charges filed in 2005 and those charges were then amended in 2007. And in those allegations against him, and this is by the state of California, uh, in the state of California, there were 29 charges of wrongdoing. And in that there were multiple acts of wrongdoing included and those acts of wrongdoing included lots of different things. It, it, namely, uh, there were charges of gross negligence, repeated negligent acts, inadequate record keeping, incompetence, dishonest and or corrupt acts, which included things like knowingly making a false document. It also included false or misleading advertising. And maybe one of the more egregious things, in my opinion, that were listed in the, these charges were uh, aiding and or abetting the unlicensed practice of medicine. And that relates to taking what apparently was a nurse and allowing that nurse to practice medicine as if he was a doctor. In fact, letting that person uh, seemingly perform a facelift in his clinic. Now, all of these charges were reviewed by the state of California and ultimately they uh, revoked Dr. Orion's license. And in that uh, revocation, they agreed to stay the revocation, which means he didn't actually have to have his license fully revoked. That was stayed and he had to serve five years of probation. And there were many different stipulations he had to comply with with that uh, probationary period. Uh, he had to do 45 hours of medical education, that uh, 20 of which were in addition to the usual amount that you're supposed to have to do, and specifically were applied to the areas that he was found to be deficient in. Uh, he had to enter into a clinical training program that would include assessing his own physical and mental health, his communication skills, his medical knowledge, skills, and judgment. Uh, he had to do a medical records keeping course. He had to do an ethics course. Uh, he had to uh, take a clinician patient communication course. And then the most important part of this is he could not practice in solo practice. In fact, he could not practice at all without being monitored by a board certified doctor through those five years of probation. He also could not supervise any physician assistants. Though he, in fact, went ahead and complied with all of these things after many years of probation, he did fulfill his requirement and the probation was lifted. 
But that is not the only problem that he's had with the law or legally related issues. Uh, he had multiple lawsuits that were filed against him personally. In fact, I became aware of at least nine lawsuits that named him for medical malpractice that were filed against him. This is in the state of California. There were also 30 lawsuits that were related to his clinic, Epion, uh, apart from the nine that were filed against him personally. So uh, that's, in my opinion, quite a number of lawsuits that were filed against him. That's a lot of unhappy patients. Now, speaking of unhappy patients, there is one pretty famous unhappy patient that brought her story public. And this was Dick Van Dyke's fiance. Uh, I believe they're married now, so it's his wife now. But then, at the time, it was uh, his fiance. And uh, that story was featured on CrimeWatchDaily.com with Chris Hansen. Now, interestingly, that story was removed from their website. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Dr. Urian has had a talent, or someone working for him has a talent, of getting these things redacted and removed online. However, you can still find a lot of this in different sites, and, and I was able to. Now, the Dick Van Dyke story, I actually saw the original CrimeWatchDaily.com story and saw the video that related to it. Since it's been removed, you can't find it, but there are links to the story that were published elsewhere we got some details from there. Dick Van Dyke was very upset once he saw the results in the lipofreeze treatment that his fiance sought in Dr. Orion's clinic. Now, that lipofreeze treatment, that's sort of like cool sculpting. It might even be cool sculpting. Uh, I'm not sure what lipofreeze means, but it is a cryolipolysis treatment. This is what I assume is similar to cool sculpting. In fact, it may be cool sculpting he's calling lipofreeze. Uh, now, that should never have any bleeding or scarring, uh, at least exceedingly rarely should it have any marks in the skin that are lasting. But in this case, Dick Van Dyke saw her results, and I'll quote him, said, When I finally saw the really horrible scars, I blew my top. I became apoplectic. And the interview goes on. It talks about how her results led to a lot of bleeding. In fact, it said... Uh, that they had to guard the wedding dress from blood. Because again, this was before the wedding, and so she was getting fi fittings, and they were worried that she was going to drip blood from her, uh, her wounds from this lipofreeze treatment on her wedding dress. Now, uh, in my practice, I've done a lot of cool sculpting, and I can tell you I have never had any bleeding associated with cool sculpting. In fact, up until this story, I was never aware that bleeding was even potentially possible with cool sculpting. Nonetheless, that's what happened with this lipofreeze treatment. Uh, now, in the website, and we'll share the link with you, you guys can check out this link to the story and you can check it out for yourself. In the, uh, the website, you can see <clears throat> there are pictures of them being interviewed and it's from crimewatchdaily.com. Um, <laughs> Dick Van Dyke said, I'm not a violent person, but when I walked in that room, I was ready to punch that guy out. He was pretty pissed, as that her bleeding was so bad at one point she was forced to wear a corset to not only compress everything, but also to guard the wedding dress from blood or anything oozing out. Uh, and that was during a fitting. And they have some pictures showing the uh, what looks like bloody blisters and kind of healing wounds on her body from this treatment. Um, she said, uh, in retrospect, I now know this was not a good way to go into the procedure, but they have salespeople who they've guised as nurses. Now, that is a, a pretty shocking allegation by her, and apparently she did not meet with Dr. Urian prior to, or I'm not sure if she met with Dr. Urian even during her treatment. It doesn't really say. Now, it seems that Dick Van Dyke and his now wife feel like people don't know the full truth about Dr. Orion because it says that uh, the main reason he and his wife were going public with their story almost five years later, five years after her treatment, was because they believe people have a right to know about their medical professionals. So they feel that people don't know the full story of Dr. Orion, and I'd say, in my opinion, I'd have to agree. Dr. Urian does a number of treatments that uh, seemingly are proprietary. And one of the best examples of this is a treatment called Cool Laser. Now, Cool Laser doesn't seem to be any type of laser that you can buy. 
In fact, the name Cool Laser is trademarked. This is a trademark name. The trademark is held by Dr. Simon Urion. So it appears that he trademarked the name Cool Laser uh, and uses it to describe a treatment. We know that the treatment is some form of light or laser treatment, but we don't know exactly what that light or laser treatment is. Uh, in fact, there's no other doctor in the world that can use that term cool laser because he holds the trademark and he won't let anybody else use the term. Uh, I'm not aware of any device that's been built with the name cool laser, yet there seems to be some cool laser treatment with the name cool laser, I believe, on the machine in his office. Or at least he refers to it as cool laser uh, when he does the treatments and we post things online about this treatment cool laser. Now, a very well-known dermatologist who in fact is a cosmetic dermatologist and well-known online, he's got a great reputation, is Dr. Jason Emmer. And Dr. Emmer made a comment about Cool Laser on one of the uh, websites. And uh, his comment was, I have yet to see a positive result from this laser. Every day in my practice, I find someone coming to me for an alternative treatment. So it doesn't seem to be a terrific treatment, and certainly not in the opinion of Dr. Jason Emmer. And there are, are at least one really negative review that I found in just a little bit of research talking about cool laser and not having great results. Um, so it's very difficult to really know much about the cool laser treatments. Besides Dick Van Dyke and his wife putting their story out in the public about how unhappy they were with the treatment by Dr. Orion, there are also a number of other negative reviews and negative complaints about Dr. Orion's care that you'll find in various sites on the internet. Uh, particularly, there are as many as 13 different complaints filed on ripoffreport.com. Problem is that ripoffreport.com has a method to try and obscure those reviews. See, when you enter the ripoffreport.com complaint, it's featured prominently and you can put anything you want in the name of your complaint. So you could say Dr. Orion scam or Dr. Orion scam artist if you wanted to. And that would be the header for your review or your complaint on ripoff.com or ripoffreport.com. The ripoffreport.com website allows for what they call the corporate advocacy program. And that is a method to hide your negative reviews. The way it works is you apply, you apply, you fill out an application and uh, comply with some of the things they ask you to do. And they do go to the business and check out to make sure that it's not, you know, in some back alley thing, that it's an actual real business and has proper licenses. But apart from that, it's really just all you need to do and you pay a fee. And that fee depends on how many negative reports you've had and how big your business is. And they, I couldn't learn exactly what the fee is, and it doesn't say online. It actually tells you that it varies depending upon the issue. So in the case of Dr. Orion, uh, I imagine he joined the Verified Business Program or the Corporate Advocacy Program. And if you look up Simon Orion on Ripoff Report, you'll see that all of his reviews, and they're down the left side of that page now where they used to be prominently displayed in the main page, all of those reviews the titling has been replaced by a copy that they wrote talking about it being a verified business and part of the corporate, uh, corporate <laughs> advocacy program. Um, and so when you look at that website, you'll see that it looks like a commercial for Simon Orion. And it is. You, you have to scroll all the way down. Well, first you have to hit the link to one of the actual reviews. And then you've got the photos separate from the actual review, you've got to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll find the review. Now some parts of the review when you join this corporate advocacy program are redacted, they're removed because they either feel it was inflammatory or you know, could not be proved and so they actually remove parts of the review but they do leave the review up and you can find it if you know where to look. So if you want to check this out, go to the ripoffreport.com, scroll down and you'll find his reviews much of which is still intact and there for you to read. Now, if you have trouble finding that or trouble finding the multiple negative reviews on Yelp, you, there is a resource you can go to. And it's a resource that I found and I found very helpful when I was doing my research for this video. It's called uh, epionebeverlyhills.com. Very smart name. Just make sure that I've got that right. And yes, it's epione, it's E-P-I-O-N-E, -E, beverlyhills.com. Now, Dr. Orion's website is epionbh.com, 
obviously BH, I would assume, for Beverly Hills. So whoever made this website was very smart and chose epionbeverlyhills.com. And when you go there, you'll see this whole story about Dr. Simon Urian. It shows all the details that I'm talking about and even some that I'm not talking about. And you can read the reviews from Yelp. You can read the reports from ripoffreport.com that were at least portions, if not the entire thing, cut and pasted. And there are lots of documents from the state of California, so you can read for yourself everything that I'm mentioning in this video. It was a great resource, and if you're thinking about uh, using Dr. Orion for your care, or if you just want to check out what I'm saying, you can check it out at that website. Now, it's amazing. I'm not sure how Dr. Orion has managed to get people to uh, remove their negative reviews, or certainly using the, the corporate advocacy program. Uh, that's been a way to remove some of the reviews. But a lot of the things that I've seen uh, somehow are removed in time, particularly that Dick Van Dyke story was removed and it's hard to find, even though we gave you the link. So I think you'll see that there's a lot more to Dr. Orion than Kim Kardashian and his other celebrity patients. I have no issue with him having celebrity patients. God bless him and everyone like him that has a very successful practice. At least know what you're getting into. Don't be lured into the glitz and glam of Kim K and the rest of his apparent clientele. Make sure you know the background. And if you are going to be seeking care for cosmetic dermatology, you might want to know if your doctor's actually a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon, someone that's had the right residency training to practice that kind of medicine. You also might want to know if they've ever been sued or named in a lawsuit. And you might want to know some of the backgrounds of patients that maybe weren't happy with the care. And once you have all that information, you can make your decision. But then you've got all the information. I'm not trying to tell you not to go to him, just trying to get the information out there and make sure everyone knows what the true story is behind Dr. Simon Orion. This has been an exposed segment. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it informational and educational. And if you like what you see, please go ahead and subscribe and you'll know when we do more of these segments and other videos you might like that are educational about plastic surgery and beauty. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my YouTube video. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. You'll always get updates on when we're posting new videos that I think you might enjoy. And you can check out regular things that we post in Instagram and Snapchat as well. Follow me on Instagram at, at Plastic Surgery Truths, and that profile has all kinds of great Q&A videos that we put up. People send me questions, I answer them. We've got other features you'll find, and of course, the ongoing Exposed segment. You'll also be able to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Rubenstein. That's at Dr. Rubenstein, which is my personal page for my practice. And there, you'll see all the kinds of stuff we do around the office, a little bit of my private life, and uh, you'll get to see live surgery, because we post our surgery every day. As long as patients give me permission, we're going to share it with you. So you guys can check that out every day and hopefully learn something if you're following me. You can also check me out in Snapchat, at Dr. Rubenstein. I love answering your questions. If you guys have questions, send them to me. Hit me on Instagram. Hit me in Snapchat. Send me a message in YouTube. Email me. I'm always happy to get your questions and make videos to answer you so that we can help educate everybody and keep everybody safe. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. You guys will see me on the next Exposed segment here on YouTube.